Outward 2 is an upcoming open world RPG. The first Outward was one of my favorite games and I have a lengthy video review for that. But the short version is that the Outward series has challenging combat with no difficulty selection, it has no map markers, and it has adopted some survival elements to encourage careful preparation and play. According to the developer Nine Dots, the sequel will continue that tradition, but will also have a higher production value and much more polish. I got the opportunity to play a demo of Outward 2, and in this video I'll be giving you my impressions of that. The demo had no story or NPC interactions. It was a gameplay-oriented demo. Its purpose was to show the difference and improvements between combat in the first game and the second. And so that's what I'm going to focus on here. The biggest takeaway is that combat in Outward 2 is much smoother. In Outward 1, there was a significant delay between performing one action and beginning another. And the delay is lengthier than it is in other commitment-oriented games. Things like Elden Ring and Lies of P. Commitment is important to all the games of this type, because the combat in all of them revolves around finding opportunities and paying a cost if you attack when you shouldn't. But in Outward 1, there was an unusual clunkiness to it. When I asked about this change, the developers explained that the delay in some attacks in the first game were to the point of being unrealistic. The point of Outward gameplay is about being a nobody. You're a ordinary person that is attempting to go on an extraordinary adventure. And so commitment to attacks is important. But in the first game, some of those delays were large enough that ordinary people playing the game would think to themselves, well, even I could move faster than that. I'm an ordinary person, and even I could do better than what the character on the screen is doing. Which could be damaging to their immersion and not feel good to play. And after playing the demo, my opinion is that this new system is a big improvement. It feels more fun to move and to play. And this won't necessarily make the game easier. There is still a big focus on commitment, and according to the devs, the enemies will be balanced around your newfound fluidity. Now let's talk about some significant changes. In Outward 1, there were only specific things you can equip to your offhand. In your offhand, you could have a shield, you could have a pistol, you could have a lantern. But in this game, those trinket items are no longer just trinket items. You can equip them in any hand, and you can dual wield freely. So you could have two swords, a sword and a dagger, two shields. There weren't any pistols in the demo, but presumably you'd be able to dual wield pistols if you wanted. This change affects the way things are controlled a bit. Assuming you're using a PlayStation controller, the weapon that you have on your left hand is tied to your square button, and the weapon that you have in your right hand is tied to the X button. Pressing the button will do that weapon's normal attack, and holding it down will do its alternate heavy attack. Each weapon has two different heavy attacks. For example, if you do a heavy attack with the sword, it will do a forward lunge. If you do another heavy attack right after, it will slash at the enemy and dodge backwards. Continuously doing heavy attacks will alternate between the forward lunge and the backward slice. You can also go into the backward slice attack by doing a light attack and then doing a heavy right after. This makes dual wielding very interesting in this game, because you have access to the full range of moveset for both weapons in each of your hand. I found great use in pairing the sword with a dagger. The dagger attacks quickly and it doesn't use much stamina, but it has a short range. Which paired nicely with the sword's lunge attack, which let me close distances quickly when I needed to. The sword also paired very nicely with the mace. Since I could use the sword to close the distance and then use the mace's heavy attacks to do heavy stagger damage to the enemy. The stagger system is the same as in the first game. The enemy has a poise meter, and so long as that meter is full, they have hyper armor for all of their attacks. The poise will go down as you attack it. Once the stagger meter hits 50%, they'll be staggerable by all of your attacks. Until finally it depletes entirely and they fall to the ground, letting you get a bunch of damage in. And when they get back up, their poise meter will be full again. Particularly useful for breaking the enemy's poise is the shield. In the first game, the shield was one of the special trinkets you could have in your offhand, and it needed you to have a skill equipped to use it to attack. But in Outward 2, you don't need to have any special skills with it. If the shield is in your left hand, you press the square button, and it'll do a shield bash which does low damage, but high stagger damage. And if you hold down the button to do a heavy attack, the shield will do a charge and then a shield bash, which lets you cross some distance and stagger the enemy even more. There is also two-handed weapons. In the demo, I had a spear. You can't dual-wield two-handed weapons. Instead, their movesets are expanded. 
In addition to their normal light and heavy attacks, they'll have access to two other attacks by pressing the left-handed button. Square will back them off and do a forward poke, and holding down Square will do a heavier diagonal strike. Since you can't have a second weapon or a shield when two-handing, the heavy weapons are compensated with a more complex moveset. Another big change is the way that dodging works. Pressing dodge will do a short-range step dodge, and double-tapping the roll button will have you do a more traditional dodge roll. Both of these dodges have iframes, but they're useful for different reasons. The light dodge doesn't take up much stamina, and you can use it to stay close to your enemy. And you can step dodge freely even when carrying your backpack. The roll is safer, I believe it has more iframes. The distance is longer, putting you safely out of enemy attacks. And you can use it to close distances and attack quickly, since you have a new attack when coming out of a dodge roll. And the attack transitions smoothly into your normal light attacks. But it has the trade-off of using a lot more stamina, and you won't be able to use it effectively with your backpack on. Skills work the same way as they did in Outward 1. You can quick slot them, and they go on a short cooldown after use. In the demo, I had access to three skills. The Fire Sigil, Spark, and a Charge Attack. The Sigil and Spark work the same way as in the first game. Cast the Sigil on the ground while you have a Fire Stone in your inventory, and then you can use Spark to cast a Fireball. But the Charge Attack is new, it also interacts with the Sigil. When used together, the Charge Attack will also do an explosion on the enemy and leave a trail of fire behind you. The demo only had those three skills to play with, but notably the number of quick slots we have access to is now doubled. In Outward 1 we had eight quick slots and they were accessed by pressing either R2 or L2 and one of the face buttons and that would let us either use a skill or an item that we had bound to that quick slot. But now instead of just the face buttons you can also use the directional buttons, which doubles the number of total quick slots we have access to. This is a really great change. Not just to have easier access to skills or healing items, but particular foods or potions that we might like to use before certain battles. Or to let us switch weapons and have skills for those weapons, like if we want to use bows in certain situations. It's just a fantastic, much-needed addition. All in all, I think the demo did its job. I'm very impressed with the way combat flows in Outward 2. I think anyone that played Outward 1 will be very happy with the changes. And maybe more importantly, I think a lot of people that were interested in Outward 1, but bounced off because of its clunkier gameplay, will find the sequel a lot more appealing. Anyway, that's the end of this video. I'll be keeping an eye out and making more content for this game as more information gets revealed and we get closer to release. But until then, thank you very much for watching.